Welcome back to the Watch So Serious Podcast. We are back. Brandon and Mike and Devin are back to recap uh, The Flash uh, Season 4, Episode 12, Honey, I Shrunk Team Flash. Uh, the team battles a meta who can shrink anything he touches. Cecile's, also, Cecile's pregnancy gives her temporary powers. Um... I actually like this episode. Uh, I think it was back. I think they kind of got back on track. Uh, Mike, what'd you think? Uh, it was okay. I mean, I don't know. It was, it was funny. Um, I didn't like any of the Barry stuff this episode after the... Well, I liked it until the end. I don't want to get skip that far. Um, and I feel like the CW is just kind of sidelining their main characters recently and just making a lot of, I don't know, interesting decisions. I'm not, like, in love with it. It was better than the last two episodes, but I'm not, like, over... I'm not, like, oh, this is great. Like, we're getting back on track. I'm still, I'm still, you know, taking it with a great soul. Uh, Devin, what'd you think? Uh, I definitely was very happy to see or getting them back on the track with, with the episode being good. Um, but I think... Like I was saying in, in previous podcasts, is that we're 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 like more we're we're putting a light on more of the background character. Like we got a lot of Joe and Lucille this week. Uh, we we find out that Lucille has a, is Cecile. a meta right now. Cecile, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, Cecile is a meta right now. That's pretty cool. Um, but I don't know what it's gonna do. But and you're giving some foreshadowing of what the season can come. I mean, the second half of the season is going to bring. Um, and it was it was good. It was just a good, and we got like a nice little pot twist towards the end of the episode. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was good. It was back to me liking The Flash because uh, it was going downhill, and they saved it. Well, the reason why I like this episode is because they changed things up. So, Cecile, tempor- so basically the show starts off and they find out that... Um, Something happened to do with uh, Cecile's pregnancy has allowed her to get temporary meta problems, no, meta no. powers. Yeah. What? I didn't like that. I didn't think it made any sense. It was what weird. What are you talking about? That makes perfect sense. How? Because when women get pregnant, uh, Mike, things change with their bodies. And, in a, and they get the ability to read minds. Mike, in a world with dark matter and a particle accelerator and all that shit floating through the world, Yes, it's completely reasonable that something would manifest like that. Why do you always do this? We watch a TV show with a dude who can run at the speed of light because he got <laughs> because of dark matter. We watch a TV show where uh, some matter hit a bus that popped out of nowhere out of a thing called the Speed Force. It made everybody on that bus get powers. And then you think it's <laughs> implausible that a person who lived in that city couldn't just manifest powers? I just think it's random. It's no, like, it, they said it like it, it was lying dormant it, until you know a pregnancy that. brought up. Yeah, yeah, they said it was left there with dark matter from probably the particle accelerator or one of the other thousands of events. Look, that you happened. can justify anything on these these shows. I'm just saying. So I didn't, why are I you it was, questioning it? I just think it's too much. There's too much going on. It's too much going on. Last week you said there's not enough going on. The shows got stale. This week they switched some stuff up, add some new things, and it's no, you know, no. I don't I mean there's two events happened. going on. I just mean like we got like I feel like they're biting off more than they can chew. Like, look, last week we had uh, so we sidelined the Flash. Okay, so that means we have we have Killer Frost. We got Vibe to work Killer with. Killer Frost have, is not really there. She only shows up every once in a while. All right, hold on. I'm getting I'm getting to a point here. We had the elongated man, and we had Caitlin and Cisco as sort of, and I guess we'll throw Harry in there. But, like, they all sucked except for Elongated Man. They got captured real easily. It's like, you're. I feel like they're introducing too many powered characters now. It's just, it's just, it's just too much. Cecile is like, not a powered character, though. She's a pregnant she woman who has fucking powers. I don't know. I just didn't like it. Yeah, I loved it. Because I thought it was awesome. It gave Cecile a new element of her character. It allowed her to, it created a nice mm-hmm. little storyline mm-hmm. with her and Joe. That made a whole lot of sense, and it created one of the best moments in the show when Joe and Cecile had to talk it out, because that's some real shit. If your woman could read your mind, that would fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, uh, 
so that was like some real shit. And it, I think it's going to have something that something's going to have to do with that with how they help get DeVoe or help get Barry out of prison with her being able to read minds. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what happens with that. But it totally makes sense. Like, it's either one of two things. Either she's got a meta or baby, which would allow in – the, in the comic books, they've established that if you're pregnant with a metahuman that you would temporarily get powers. Or it's just this leftover shit that happens because her hormones are changing, which also makes sense to me. So I like how they changed that up in the show, and, and they created some different perspectives of the show where Joe and Cecile had to go down this path. So I just want to get into that. So basically – Cecile is just like, she don't know how to control it because it just kind of popped out of nowhere, which makes sense. So she's just reading everybody's fucking mind, and she's just all excited about it and happy about it, which was hilarious. And apparently she's reading Joe's every thought, and Joe is fucking freaking out because he's like, this woman can read every thought of mine. And then they at the end, they get like this real deep conversation where he's like, you know, when you read my thoughts and you understand what I'm saying, thinking, it kind of makes me, you know, feel... Uh, weak, vulnerable, vulnerable. Yeah. yeah, and it's like he's like I'm not I'm not used to that feeling, and it's just different towards me. And then she basically tells him all her inner thoughts and stuff that makes her feel vulnerable and makes her uncomfortable. And it was a really really good moment. Devin, what do you think about the show long storyline with Joe and Cecile? I I don't I just know that black women on the CW out here looking like winning, yo. That mm-hmm. like Iris is beautiful. Cecile is beautiful. Uh, her little baby bump was cute in the beginning of the episode. Uh, the whole dynamic of her and Joe uh, talking it out, and then Iris uh, suggesting counseling. You know that, how that old Danielle Nicoletta is? She's 46 years old. Damn. Wow. Mm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that whole, and the, and the whole therapist, that was funny again. I enjoy her every time she she uh, she makes an appearance on the show, um, and then Cecile's powers just add a, a funny a, a element of funny that uh, makes this show go along really well. Uh, but I definitely like the the dynamic between Joe and Cecile and getting more into them be, having a baby. It was good. It's good. And Mike, why are you such a curmudgeon when it comes to these love stories on these shows? No, actually, I thought the conversation they had was good. Um, I, I just didn't like the mind. I just thought the mind control thing was weird. But given that it happened, I thought it was a really good conversation. You know who else had. is probably going to get powers this season? Iris. Why? Because she's probably going to get temporary powers. Oh, because she's pregnant? Or she's going to get pregnant? Because we see that girl running around who clearly is a, has powers. Well, Barry's got to get out of jail first, which is going to be even harder now. I thought it was going to be a three-episode arc, but I don't know why. No, he's going to get it's out really of jail next episode, I bet. Well, I didn't watch the preview. What was it? Did anyone? Did you guys catch it? Yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean... Uh... Well, we'll get to that when we get to him. So uh, then we get Barry in prison, and he's with Goldberg. They call him Big Sir. And <laughs> uh, basically, uh, we find out that uh, Big serves in prison for something that he didn't do. At least, you know, he gives the impression that he didn't do it. And Barry believes him. And he's like, you know what, I'll talk to my people and see what we can do. And so he lets them know. And, and the meanwhile, I, wanted, I thought this was a cool moment where everybody's talking about random shit. And Harry just comes out like, Barry's in fucking prison. And all you guys are laughing and joking. <laughs> like, we need to do something to get him out of prison. And so he gets this message from Barry and he's basically like, this dude, he was like, he didn't ask us for anything. He doesn't care. He's in prison because of us. For us, the least we can do is work on this case for him. So that happened at the same time as the we find that there's this new metahuman called Dwarf Star who has the powers to shrink things into miniature sizes and then enhance them whenever he wants to use them. Which I, when I saw the title, Honey, I Shrunk Team Flash, I was like, oh, that's kind of corny. But I kind of liked this villain and his powers. Uh, Mike, what'd you think about Dwarf Star? Uh, I was hesitant. I was nervous when I watched this episode that it was going to be really corny. And it was, but I was kind of okay with it because it was kind of funny, at least. Uh, I feel like this episode, they weren't really taking themselves seriously, and so it was okay for it to be a little corny. Um, like, when they step, when Iris stepped on uh, Elongated Man, it was funny. And 
a lot of good references by Cisco in this episode. So I feel like it's just more filler plot so that the te- we can see more how Team Flash handles things without Barry. Yeah, but what do you think uh, about War Star? Oh, I mean, that's a weird power, but it was funny. He made it funny. He was okay. He was good. He was, he was fine. I don't. I'm not like overwhelmed with him. Like I don't think he's the greatest thing ever. But it wasn't. I didn't. I actually didn't think the corniness was bad for this episode. I think it worked. I, I think the way they pulled off his powers in in this in the actual show uh, with the effects was really good as far as showing him showing what you do, uh, showing him shrinking uh, Cisco and and. Um, and uh, Ray, um, Debney, whatever, or whatever, elongated man. Uh, that was cool. He, he shrunk a whole building and picked it up. And I loved how Cisco, like, paid attention to the details when they busted in on his, in his crib and stuff like that. Um, well, that was the coolest spot. Basically, he basically made a bunch of miniature stuff, like models in his house out of real shit. Which I thought it was cool as fuck. Yeah, and then, I did too. And then you could just take them in, like, you could put them, imagine being able to take, like, toy cars and put them in your pocket, and then you get in a fight, and all you gotta do is throw the toy car, and then it that grows shit was and so big. Good. Like, that shit was yeah. cool. That's cool as shit. So I thought. A lot of people were mad. I saw on Twitter that they felt like they ripped that off of Civil War. I mean, I guess. Everything is a ripoff of everything. Right. <laughs> The Flash has speed, so does Quicksilver. Like, Hawkeye shoots arrows, so does Green Arrow. Like, it's everything's a ripoff of everything. So I, I feel like that's kind of a, um, a stupid argument. Uh, also, they gave another shout-out to Cord Industries, which we've seen on Arrow and on Flash at this point. So I, I'm hoping I see Blue Beetle at some point, but I doubt it. But it'd be cool if we saw Ted Cord or found out that Ted Cord was around somewhere uh, doing shit um, with Cord Industries. So then, basically, uh, they go to um, confront this guy who they found, who they think is the Dwarf Star, and they've realized that this guy's probably the same guy that killed the Yo, person. Yo, I got a question, though. Yeah. Do you think he was ripped like that, or like his powers helped him get like that? Because old boy was swole. No, that was before like, he got powers. He got powers on the bus. No. Yes. I thought he got powers before. No. They said that he went and stole. He stole something near the bus route, and then he got on that bus. He stole. Ah. Oh, he stole a dwarf star from some. From some court industry. Yeah, he stole a dwarf star from some company. He got on that bus after he took it. And then when the dark matter hit it, it kind of merged together and helped develop his piles to what he hit when Barry came out of the speed force. How many people is this now from the bus? How many people have, have they revealed? I think from it's the bus? been six, six or seven. They said it were 12 people on the bus. I really, I'm, I'm with Brandon. I really want them to start real, rolling out some of the, some good guys because, like, it's getting, I don't know. I want to see some who else. Yeah, it's an interesting thing people. about that, though. In, if people got powers in real life, I'm. I already think very little of the human race, so I'm pretty sure that if people got powers in real life, a large percentage of them would do bad. I'm shit evil as shit. Damn right, I'm evil as shit because I'm gonna hedge my powers to make my life easier or to gain something. Yes. So the idea that there's gonna be more bad guys than good guys has always made sense to me in comic books and in TV shows and sci-fi and things like that because people are shitty. So like, yeah, I just I hope there's got to be at least one more or two more other than well. To be people. fair, the one girl that had the luck power, I wouldn't say she was technically a bad person. She just had like bad boys. luck. I mean, she just created they bad luck around finish. there. Good luck for her. Um, I didn't think they gonna do that. But I hope um, I like that, and they kind of oh, so I got caught off guard. So basically, they um, they 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 come to the conclusion that this guy is the same person that. Uh, killed the person that they said Big Sir or Goldberg killed, and so they're trying to get him so he can convince, so he can confess, so Goldberg can get out of prison. So the whole time, rem- they- yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just say, so I got curious, and Big Sir is actually a character from the I comics. S- I said <laughs> that on the last episode. last week. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you read yeah. his bio? Because it's hilarious. Go ahead and read it. It's <laughs> born Doofus P. Ratchet. 
He had a malformed brain gland that caused him to grow to incredible proportions but left him mentally handicapped. He was later abducted from his Central City mental hospital home by a group of supervillains who equipped him with a high-tech suit of armor created by the Monitor that was heavily armored, could fly, and included a powerful energy flow, but it also made him susceptible to telepathic suggestions. So basically, he was just a big, dumb brute that they controlled and had him do, like, bodyguard stuff with. But in the show, he's not portrayed that way, obviously. I just thought it was funny. I just wanted to, like, bring that up. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, so basically they find that out and they uh, they try to confront him and he ends up shrinking Ralph and Cisco. And I thought that was some really good comedy the entire time that they were small. Yeah, and definitely. So then Harry tries to make this gun that he calls the embiggen gun, which is hilarious <laughs> to me. Embiggen as a word is such a fucking funny thing. And uh, but when he shoots, and he the just gun, knew it was gonna stick. Yo, he kept trying to say it like it was gonna stick. Yeah, he kept trying to like, no, like that's not a word, bro. Yeah, and I shut that shit down real good. He shot him, and it ends up fucking him up and making him unstable, uh, because changing your molecules like that over and over again will probably make you fucking unstable, um, even in a world like that. So, uh, meanwhile, Barry's in prison with Big Sur. Mike, you didn't like these scenes. Why you didn't like these scenes with Barry? No, I I, I, I corrected myself. I liked everything until the very end. Oh, okay, yeah. Barry, Barry. So the whole time Barry is with Big Sur, he's being what a hero does. He's talking about hope, and he's like, you know, you got to have hope when you're here, and you got they always something good can happen on the outside. And he's like, I grew up loving this girl that was way out of my league, and I ended up marrying her. My father was in here for 17 years, and the person who actually killed my wife convinced, like, confessed, and he got out. Like, these some good things can happen for you, and. And Goldberg's basically like, yeah, that's all fine and good, but I've been here long enough to not get myself all hyped up about something. And meanwhile, this is when I knew something was up with the warden. He comes up to Barry, and he's basically like, yeah, you know, the last dude that tried to help another inmate, and it didn't go well, and he fucking killed him. And so I was like, God damn, that's, like, kind of fucked up. Why would you yeah, say like, that? Yeah, like, why would you say that? Yeah. So I started thinking twice about him at that point. Uh, and at the same time, they're trying to figure out how to get Ralph and Cisco big. So they end up getting this big fight again, and they catch him. And that's where they had to see that was very similar to Civil War. Um, and they catch him, and then they're like, "All right, Carrie points his big ass gun at him, and it's like, you're gonna con- you're gonna confess to what you did to Big Sir." And I'm like, um, "I'm pretty sure in court he can say he was under duress for this confession." With this big yeah. ass gun pointing at him, um, but he's like, "Oh, big sir, fuck him. I'm not confessing." I was like, "God damn, that's fucked up." <laughs> and I shit was everything, yo. So Barry has I to tell it. him, and I was like, "God," I was, no, and I that kind of that part that. kind of made me. I mean, I liked it, but it kind of made me upset because I'm like, "This show needs like something good to happen." There's been so much bad happening. <laughs> and I wanted to see a happy ending. And then we actually got it because Barry's been hesitant to use his powers the entire time since he was in prison. And I think he was just fed up at another person getting not getting justice. And he just fucked. He said at one point. I think it was more so that he he made those promises. Yeah. And he and he really went the extra mile. And you you can't guarantee things that you don't know the outcome to, you know. Right. And then that's when he took matters into his own hands uh, because of, was it something Joe said or? No, well, no. So Big Sir had talked to him and he was like, what would you want to do when you get out? And he was like, oh, yeah, it's this place in China, in China that I'd love to go to. So Barry was just like, Barry got angry, picked him up, ran to China, dropped him off, left him a note saying like sometimes a happy ending does happen or hope pays off, something like that. And he comes back but we come to find out that uh, after Barry had that talk with the warden about still trying to help out Big Sur, uh, the warden put a camera to make, I guess he said, to make sure nothing happens to Barry or no fight happens. And it ends up catching him using his powers, which I'm assuming this is the part you didn't like, Mike. Yeah, I didn't like this at all. Why not? It's just too, I mean, 
I'm I'm sure it's gonna be a good episode next week. It's it's got a nice build up to. But I just I was like, are you serious? Like, how much worse can this get? Like, this is just how are you gonna get out of this now? Now you got people who know who you are. They want to sell you to some I guess medical black practice. market shit though. So like, you know, I'm just like good. this is terrible. This Isn't is just that the like, same woman from earlier in the season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Amulet, Amunet, Amulet, Black, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever her name was. Yeah, and so I'm just like, it was frustrating because it's like, I just want too, too many losses. They need to start taking some wins. Uh, Devin, uh, what do you think about this part? And uh, what do you think is going to happen with Barry? Uh, I I think he's definitely going to have to fight in some underground, underground shit next week. Uh, but I think that... Um, I was it was in ingen- it was genius how my man caught him on camera though because uh, I didn't see yep. that coming. It was definitely people are a- definitely if this is some black market shit, you gotta be certain that they're selling his identity or something on there too. Like they everyone's got, gonna they gotta do, they're gonna have to do something. That's I don't know if this is a black market thing. I just think that the warden is a shitty person and he's got some oh, type of deal with Amunet. But- oh, you hey guys, you remember when we were talking about like you know Cisco. Like working with CCPD and stuff like that, and and having metahuman shit, like they need to check. They need to check everybody to, for being metahumans, cause mm-hmm. like that's bullshit. That they already had the, the whole metahuman prison in the prison. Well, I said and that they not use it. They already yeah, have like a metahuman right. wing. I thought they would have detectors, excuse me, in the regular wing to make sure that they don't have metahumans just running around fucking shit up in general population. But here's the thing. With him being in the preview, they show him like breaking out or gone somewhere, which tells me that. Uh, and they show clips of like the warden trying to explain to Team Flash and Iris like why they can't talk to their husband and he's missing and stuff like that. So I think this is how he gets out. Cause, and I think this is where Cecile's powers are going to come into play, where she's going to be able to tell that this dude is fucking lying. And they're going to use that in a way to say that the court is mistreating him or something like that, and he may get out that way. Which, to me, doesn't make much sense for him to get free, per se, I guess, because he still, to, according to the law, killed DeVoe. But I think this is going to have something to do with him if finally getting out. Or, or he'll get out and the warden and the jail aren't going to want to explain what happened to Barry. So they'll probably say, like, Barry Allen died in prison or something like that, and then he'll get out and have to do, like, the Harrison Wells shit. So, uh, yeah, but How's he going to go be work for CCPD again? He's not. Now, eventually he will, I think. But um, I don't know. That's just, a, that's just a theory of how he gets out because the episode shows him running around and out breaking out of a prison, breaking out of some type of place with other metas. So there's going to be, I think we're going to get introduced to another good meta because he's with other people when they show him breaking out. And I would assume there are other metas because he's a meta who he's, they're trying to sell. And they, they had collars on too. Yeah. We saw their collars. So What's would, the description for the next episode? Do we have it? Uh, yeah. It's called True Colors. Amunet makes a deal to buy all the metahumans in Iron Heights. So Barry must decide if he should expose his powers to save his cellmates. That's what it says. And of course he's going to do it because he's a fucking hero. But he wouldn't expose his powers to free himself. No, because that's selfish. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I want him to, I want people to know that he's the Flash, but I don't think he's going to do that. Um, So that's very interesting. Also, um, at the end, at the end of the episode, uh, Cisco and, um, I forgot to say, Cisco and, uh, Ralph get big again by Harry tricking Dwarf Star. That was really good. That was really good. Which was kind of clever and cool. Uh, so it was really, it, I thought the show kind of flowed very well this week. It threw some curveballs into the show with Barry getting, get with Barry getting found out to be the Flash, with Cecile developing this temporary power. I thought those are two things that have to at least last a couple episodes going forward which can shake things up because I found the show to be getting pretty stale and formulaic and kind of having some poor writing choices. And I think uh, introducing some something new into the show 
is going to force them to kind of be on top of their on top of their game going forward. Uh, Devin, what are you looking forward to next week? Um, to to continue the distraction, we're getting a lot of distractions. They're pulling us in different uh, different areas, and we're getting away from the devote thing, but we're really not getting away from it. It's just not in the in the forefront. Uh, just to see what you know, Amulet uh, has in store because she's evil, and I like her. I like her sassiness, and I like her uh, her wit. Uh, when she talks that shit, uh, and this see this warden man, he's a he's a bad he's a bad dude. So I uh, just want to see uh, if he gets what's coming to him. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all, man. Hey, man, did you see when Iris had my man uh, Ralph on the bottom of her shoe? Yeah. And they showed that look. Oh man, that was <laughs> cinematography. <laughs> Mike, did, cinematography. Mike didn't notice it. Oh, I said earlier that that was one of the parts I liked about the episode. I know, but you like, you're not talking about it's what I talking about. Yeah, no, not at all. They gave you good I camera angles. Always in the dark on this podcast. <laughs> no, you, you just didn't catch the angle. The angle was everything. You were looking uh, at a totally different thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, though. Um, yeah, Mike, what are you looking forward to next week? I want him to get out of jail. I want this to be resolved. I want I want to thank her God. I mean, obviously, this is definitely not going to happen for a while, but. Um, I want to see if he gets out of jail. Definitely how he gets out of this new metahuman thing. I want to know who knows his identity. I want to know what they're going to do with him. He's definitely going to get sold in the, the black market, though. Definitely. I agree. All right. Anything else you guys got about this episode? I don't know. No, where's DeVoe? Like, what are they doing this week? You know, like, I, I kind of miss them. They're building I, up, the- I think they're just building up anticipation for him to do something big. Because they made a reference to him saying, like, DeVoe doesn't do anything by accident. So he wouldn't be surprised if everything that happened this episode has something to do with him as well. Because he's they were basically like, why would DeVoe want Dwarf Star in prison? Because we know that he's had something to do with everybody that was on that bus. Um, so he kind of he probably does have a plan for Dwarf Star for something that involves his plan. So I would expect to see it. Uh, at like, I expect to see something like a hint to him at the like the little after credit scene next week, and then in two weeks to get back into the DeVoe storyline. That's what I would expect. Okay, I, that's all I really wanted to know. All right, uh, thank you guys for listening to our flash recap on the Wise Series podcast. Please subscribe to us on Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, tune in. Uh, you can listen to us on That Cool Black Nerd. Go to our new Facebook page. Just search for Why So Serious Podcast. Uh, like the page, share it with your friends. Uh, help us get more people listening. And we will be back soon. Thank you. Good job, Mike. That was really good, Mike. Here.